welcome back uh, my gardening friends well I'm just set the uh, last two edging curbs on this run and uh, run the string line from end to end because the two boxes behind you were done before so I've hopefully got this nice and true this slab is slightly low but I can actually put these uh, plastic uh, bits of thick plastic underneath uh, if it's uh, not quite level so I'll stick the uh, next pipe collar on and this is uh, how easy it is to build a bed from uh, pipe collars you can always straighten it up afterwards Just make sure they do sit down because I have made mistakes before and left them up, tried to reset it and realised my mistake. Now I can actually eye this through and if I've got any problems uh, with either side I can put this plastic under which I've had to do in the past but I'll uh, we'll have a little look through now and see if uh, we've got this one uh, half right. Well, it's nice to be able to get those in. That's, uh, a little look. And I think that last one just needs pulling out a touch. And, uh, as I look along, the level looks pretty damn good. So I'm going to make a few adjustments. So adjustments made, and uh, I'm uh, reasonably uh, happy with that now. Uh, blowy again. I'm not going to be too fussed because by the time I've uh, climbed into the bins uh, and uh, attached the plastic my big feet and everything then they do move so it's when I actually fill the beds uh, because this plastic pushes out and I want to put those sacrificial boards along here as well I've been sticking a piece of wood under there. That can come out now and be moved on to the next one as I uh, fill these up. Now, because we've excavated this right out, we've got all this soil here. So some of this soil that hasn't got the compost in, that I've rotivated in, uh, can now be put uh, in the bottom, up to approximately the um, top of the first pallet collar. Then we have the manure. Then we have some of the soil compost and manure from the giant vegetable barrels and then the rest will come in at the top of the old carrot boxes and parsnip boxes and then the rest will be filled up with uh, material from out of the polytunnel that we sieved um, last year so that's not going to waste I don't compact this material and uh, it is sinking slowly this will get a top up before I actually um, get ready to plant the carrots. But as you can see, a very simple way of creating a, a raised bed. I've gone four high, hopefully to stop the carrot root fly, but that might not stop the vine weevil, which is attacking my carrots in the polytunnel. Uh, I don't know why, but they are. It's just, uh, just one of those. Uh, there may be some root fly damage but I'm actually finding the uh, the grubs in here we've seen this before but if you're new to my channel uh, 
this is what's happening. You watch, you won't find one. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Just a bit of, a bit of soil. But, ah, here we go. There's my little friend. And uh, there's other people did say it was something else, but it looks like a vine weevil to me. So that will be the dispatched. And I'm not using none of this soil in the carrot or parsnip boxes. I'm just using the soil that we filled these barrels with. It's all sieved, and I'm now going not going to be using it for that, so I'm, I'm reusing it again. I just didn't want those stones in the soil in the polytunnel, but I've changed my mind there. It's a lot of work, and I can make use of this uh, in those boxes. So I've previously said in uh, my previous uh, videos, uh, if you're not currently subscribed to my channel, then please consider subscribing and uh, to get notifications you need to uh, ring that bell for all notifications and uh, don't forget to hit the like button but this is my uh, carrot setup i'd grow sweet candle carrots uh, and we have uh, five that way and we've got three six seven eight that way that's my normal setup i'm going to uh, be getting a template so i can have one for the carrots and one for the parsnips because the parsnips uh, a six long by four wide so I've just been setting them out uh, using my uh, dibber to mark the location I could easily use the dibber through the template which will be a lot easier than flapping about and they'll all be in the same place and these have already been uh, prepared uh, using the crowbar and so that I know where the holes are I've just been giving it a light scattering of coffee gr uh, dry coffee grounds they're going to get wet shortly but they store better when you dry them and then I've just encircled it with uh, eggshells whether it stops the slugs or not I'm not bothered it looks good and I'll know where I'm going to be planting my three seeds out of those three seeds I'll pick the best one this year I'll be cutting them off because I did have some fork so I'll just show you now how I do the parsnips and then we'll do the carrots I'm using uh, about five foot uh, crowbar now the manure is around about here but I am going full depth like to go deeper but you can only eat so much parsnip so we've probably gone that much further into uh, the ground below This is the sieved cocoa koi compost. It's the stuff that I find uh, dumped on the side of the road, the cannabis growers. Now, if it's really good quality, I sieve it because there's less roots in it. So basically, they haven't had a very good grow. Uh, an old road cone with the top cut off and the bottom. When you sprinkle it in, make sure you sprinkle it in really slowly for the first bit because you may get an air pocket. This is very dry. But the amount of water within the compost will soon disperse into that. Because it looks very similar to the rest, that's why I've been doing that. But that's the parsnips done. I don't need to uh, go as far with the carrots. 
carry it that long is more than enough for anybody. Now, where's the manure is about there. I've topped these beds up once before. Now there's no nutrients in the top layers that I know of. And there's no nutrients in the cocoa koi. As you know, four year rotation, the roots take the last. I can't talk and do things, guys. basically the same that's what I'll do there but I'm not going so deep but the uh, four year rotation roots always get the last dregs of the manure so we top the beds off with manure for potatoes and let's say cabbages the brassica family then the beans uh, have what they want they leave uh, a little bit back in the ground and then the roots they designed to go down and fetch the last of that manure or the nutrients that we've put in they'll go deep down and fetch that so I've got no qualms at all about adding anything to this and you've seen my carrots before and parsnips uh, and gardening on a budget why do we keep spending a lot of money on fertilizers when there's fertilizers out there that we can make ourselves and if you look in my playlist under homemade liquid plant foods, uh, compost mix and mixes and activators. Uh, there's loads of videos there that you can have a little look at. My playlist is absolutely full guys so please have a look. I know a lot of you are because I can see uh, a few um, watches on different videos. So just before we go, uh, last year I used the tops uh, off the yoghurt pots. I normally cut them off there and uh, you cut that off there slide it in the ground these uh, fruit juice bottles sit in a tree so you basically you've got a little mini greenhouse with the ventilation at the top but this year if you forget these get left in and the carrots and parsnips just uh, won't come out of them so I'm trying it this year I'm taking them out and I'm just going to slide that in but you've got to remember when you take it out to be very careful else you will damage those seedlings We don't mind the odd forked carrot, but I'd like to be able to get a few for show as well as uh, for eating. So 24 parsnips uh, will uh, is suffice for us. Uh, one parsnip, you've seen the side of my parsnip, so you know it's big. So uh, they last uh, a good fortnight, so 24, 48 weeks, uh, plenty. And then this year, hopefully they'll be able to stay in. Some people have said, keep the parsnips in one bed and not into another so if I don't get the uh, carrot root fly or the vine weevil then I'll move them down a bed uh, I'll have to see but thanks for the comments uh, so in each bed we've got 40 carrots <laughs> uh, I have to have a think guys that's 40 Plus a 40, plus a 40, plus a 40, plus a 40. That's as many carrots as I've actually grown um, uh, uh, last year. And uh, I think that'll be plenty. So if you can now imagine uh, three boxes running this way, then one in the middle that way. Uh, I'm going to have two water barrels there, and then I'm going to run them that way. Uh, I'll work it out so it halfway goes across that one where the leaks are and then it'll come around this corner so we'll come a pallet collar to cover the width when it sits here so 
Uh, these are 1.2. I'm not sure about the pallet collars, but we'll see the pallet collar there. That one will come halfway up to meet it, so we've got a pallet collar there running that way. Uh, all the way to the end. And did we get a straight line on that? We did. Confession, guys. I've got a confession. We decided that we were going to have a 900 path all the way down. So it's 900 there, and it went to 890. And as you can see, that pallet collar is 900 from uh, the uh, little uh, edging wall, and it's out by uh, two or three centimeters, about 30 millimeters. Is it pleasing to the eye? I'll just have to close it a little bit as I walk up, but yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm never going to empty all those uh, pallet bins now, so. Do I give it a good hit with a sledgehammer, he says. But no, I'm pleased with these, as well as everything else. Hopefully it'll dry out so I can finish these. Uh, these are 2x2 two two, uh, slabs on the end. And this is where I've been storing some of my uh, compost. Uh, this one is holding the uh, leaf mould. And this one is the spent uh, potato uh, compost from my compost mix. So that the peg there nearest to the slabs is 900 so whatever's left leaving a gap so that I can actually get behind here to use the uh, vertical gardening damn pigeons um, yeah that's a dwarf kale dwarf kale indeed we've had some good pickings out of it uh, so basically, we'll, uh, we'll adjust the size of the beds. I've got to start working on these uh, shortly. And I will be doing a, a collaboration with uh, another YouTuber on the uh, square foot gardening. He's got more knowledge than me about the planting side of it, etc. Where he likes the way uh, I do uh, build uh, my beds. See that because the compost is a wee bit high, but we're uh, we're happy and it's uh, pleasing to the eye. That's what it's all about: making sure things uh, look right. Um, this bed here has had the extra soil and compost. This one needs it. This has had the soil. It's now going to get uh, the compost. And then once this one has sunk after a week or two we'll again add another layer of soil and compost but as you can see we've still got quite a bit of soil there by the time i've used these uh, raised beds uh, of the square foot gardening two high and three at the back with all the other compost i'm hoping that uh, i won't have too much left i've still got to trim these i haven't done it yet uh, I don't like to staple that down because the water and moisture gets trapped underneath. Uh, just recently I've left some soil. Let's just have a little look, see if we can see. It's a bin. Oh yeah, a little bin down there. And if we scrap this away. The wood is drawing the moisture from out of the soil. Oh, we've got a bit more here then. So we've got no soil touching. This, these wooden planks then uh, they're going to last a lot longer I'm going to bag this soil up from the uh, Jerusalem artichokes because I do know there's the odd uh, root in there I'm going to move these out of the way and uh, we'll whiz some more pallet collars uh, this way some of this soil will be used now so we'll be making a gap for that now this is what happens to pallet collars where the soil's uh, been touching them. Uh, I've showed that one before, that's the bottom of the parsnip box and as you can see it's a really good hard quality wood, not like the pallet collars I'm using now because they tend to be single use. But they've lasted five years, they've been used and abused and uh, Realistically, 
where it hasn't been touching the, the soil, they've lasted well. Uh, the insides, as you can see, the water and damps have been drawed up. Uh, there, where it's not so rotten, it hasn't been so bad. And if we can make them last as long as we can, then we won't have to adjust them. I was lucky with the gap there, I can just about get through. Obviously that will be different. There'll be a guttering system along here into these two barrels. And uh, like I say, I've got enough pallet collars. Uh, I think I've got 24, was it 48? I don't know. But while they keep coming, I'll keep using them. And I'll stick them at four high because this is uh, a nice height. To, to actually work on them and whether I'm leaving those posts in just in case I decide to make them three high eventually I'm not hurting nothing I must get uh, two bottles on those two there I wouldn't fancy having a, a peg in the eye that's why we must and should put something on top of our uh, Anything that where you could bend down and you could actually uh, catch your eye. Those are good noise deterrent for the pigeons. And also they help uh, protect our eyes uh, if we was to accidentally uh, bend down to pick up that solitary weed that we get now and again. <laughs> Looking on the uh, giant forums, there's one or two people now saying that their cabbages are going to seed and they look exactly like that. So hopefully in the next few weeks, uh, or months these will go to seed will it be in the way will it have to come out I do really want to save the seed from these uh, red cabbages and uh, we'll be doing a harvest soon it looks a bit uh, looks a bit manky but uh, I can assure you uh, it still tastes good do I do an excuse me of course not I haven't washed my hands Oh, I must go to the shops and buy loads of beans and pasta because of this new flu virus. I don't think so. Too many people are panicking. I've picked up another 22 bags. I think there's another 10 bags there of wood chips. Uh, these are uh, a better quality than uh, what we've been putting down. But anything is better than walking uh, uh, on this mud. If you're still with me, why not uh, consider subscribing, hit that like button, definitely leave a comment, add anything you want to add in from uh, for no dig gardening, uh, semi dig. Uh, these beds are semi, uh, these are permanent bean beds. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how things are going. It is drying out a little bit, we've not got too much squelching, lots to do. And uh, I said I'd start sowing in the middle of uh, March, but that may have to wait a little bit longer. Everything will catch up. Happy gardening to you all. Until next time, my friends. It's all for now.